That wind's strong enough to be blowing me over. I'll tell you what. Oh, look at that. Sometimes I forget how old I am. Eight on Munnith D today. And I've got a couple of uh, things I want to get done. I'm just trying to shield the mic from the wind here. Firstly, I, my eventual aim is to get to the most remote hilltop in mainland Wales. Um, it's got a name I can't pronounce, but I'll, I will try later on when, when we get there. It's, only, it's less than five kilometres from the nearest road, um, and it's actually only 0.005 kilometres farther away than the next nearest one. Anyway, that's, that's our... That's where I'm aiming to camp. Between now and then, um, I'm looking to do some navigation practice after my uh, debacle on Dartmoor. Of course, I don't have fog, so it'll be a lot easier. But uh, I think, I do feel the need to, uh, to hone up my skills a bit. So I've got a compass. I've got uh, part of a map in my pocket here. Uh, I'm walking up here. There's a, there's a sign on the map that says Burnt Mound. Um, so I'm aiming for that to start with, then I'm going cross country to some waterfalls with a bit of luck and eventually to a place called Sink Geld, which I'll tell you about when we get there. And then I'm going to take a compass beer and across to the hill that I want to be camping on. So I have worked out all the bearings and stuff beforehand, so I don't have to do it on the hill, but uh, you know, one one step at a time, isn't it? Okay, so I've got a really steep climb to start with. I'm about halfway up now. Uh, so I'll get on with it. Well, according to my GPS and according to the map, I'm now within 10 yards or so of this burnt mound. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm damned if I can. <laughs> Can't even see a mound. I expected it to be overgrown, but I don't even see a mound anywhere. Never mind. So the next thing I need to do is to navigate off to the waterfalls. Now you can see the terrain is pretty crap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up onto that ridge over there and take a bearing from there. Because I can't see anything from here. Right. So I set my sights on a junction of two, three rivers. Bearing of 254 from the top of that ridge. And I would honestly suggest you never do that because the ground between here and there is sort of knee high, waist high grass tuffets. And it's it's basically impossible to walk through with any safety at all. So I could see the river, I got about halfway down, I could see this junction, so I just uh, followed a sheep trod somewhere near and then I just come down, followed this river down because, you know, in the end, sensible. What I'm going to do now is, this is the point I was aiming at, I'm going to go on at, this is Cum Havres. Um, I'm going to follow that up. I don't know if you can see this, something looks like a bloke on top of the ridge there, but actually it's a tree. Or at least if it's a bloke, he'd been stood still for about 20 minutes. I'm going to get down by the river and try and keep out of all this grass, if I can. And we'll see how we get on. And then once I get up there, I'll take a beer in and to sink Geld. Yes, yeah, tough countryside, but it's working so far. I think that tree gets lonely over there, all by itself in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I got some decisions to make. So I'm going to sit down and have a look at the map for a minute on the rock over there. Decide what to do next. All right, have a look at this map that I brought. And I'm obviously on the bend of the river there, so that puts me probably there, is it? Let's have a look. Check on the phone, see if I'm right. 
I'm on half of this, yeah, so I'm there. Yeah, so if I'm gonna go, I'll go up to the waterfalls, just over there, and then go southwest to the main track. So that's the plan. Up to the waterfalls over there, southwest onto the main track. Look at that. You see the water blowing back up. Wow. I'll tell you what. Oh, look at that. That is brilliant. I nearly decided not to come. Have a look at this. I'm so glad that I did, but boy, God, that was tough coming out that day. Oh, dear. At one point, the bank gave way when I went up to my knees. <laughs> right. Time to do something sensible now and go and find my pitch for the night. So I just got to get up over this bank over here. There's a big track down over the other side and I can follow that more or less right to my pitch. So this waterfall is so cool, isn't it? Ha! That is so cool. Right, finally got out of that coombe. I had to walk, oh, I don't know, good three quarters of a mile up the stream before I could get over. It's just so much water in it. Anyway, I've got up to a high point now and I can see where I'm going. It's starting to cloud over as well, so I might have to take my sunglasses off, put my glasses on. Right, let's get a move on. Should be a lot easier now. The grounds, there's a track just down over there. It goes pretty close. So uh, I'll get my way over there and I'll, uh, I'll catch you up a bit later. Right, finally finished tramping over trackless wastes. And now I'm on a nice smooth-ish track, which will go within about a kilometer of where I wanna pitch for the night. So uh, yeah, looks like I'm gonna make it. So in terms of the nav practice, really I was screwed by just totally impassable ground, sort of knee high grass tussocks with big holes in between. There's no way you could follow a bearing. So I just had to uh, do the best I could and find the least worst ground. But I did get where I was wanting to go. I'm wowed by those, that waterfall, amazing. So, just gonna wander at this track for about a mile and then do a left up onto my hill. I'll catch you a bit later on. The map describes this as an area of shake holes. So I guess that's what an area of shake holes looks like. Each one with a little cavern underneath that it's fallen into. I was aiming to go to Sink Geld today, but as it's taken me so long to get up that river to the waterfall and then across, um, I'm gonna leave that till the morning, I think. I spent so long messing around in that uh, coom looking for the waterfall and trying to be a smart bugger navigating across trackless wastes that I'm now in danger of not getting to my pitch until it goes dark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. So I'm following sheep trods across this trackless waste. <laughs> and the sun's getting ready to go down. But I can at least see my hill, which is over there. The problem with it being only 4.875 miles away from the nearest road, there's nowhere to park on that nearest road. So you have to walk at least seven or eight kilometers to get there. And then you try and be a smart ass and chuck in a navigation exercise. The sun's set already, <laughs> it's 
So it might be dark by the time we get out. They're also on top of the hills. The, uh, the wind's pretty fierce. So whether I'll actually be able to camp on it, I don't know. But down here, it's, uh, it's pretty good down here. So if push comes to shove, ooh, I'll come back down here and there's plenty of places I can plunk it. So uh, anyway, I'll get on round. <sighs> Do you know, I'm so tired. Sometimes I forget how old I am when I take on these things. But uh, I'm going to do it, ain't I? So, okay, I'll uh, be back in a bit. I owe you guys an apology. Um, I did actually get to the top of that hill. I took a screenshot on my GPS, which I'll show you over there. Uh, just to prove that I've been there, but it was so windy up there. Really, really like constant, really decent wind and then gusts and stuff on top of that. So I decided enough. I didn't want to camp in the wind anymore. I wandered around the hill for a bit looking for somewhere out of the wind, but there really wasn't any because of the way the wind's blowing, the direction the wind's blowing in. So, uh, I decided to come down uh, towards the valley. So I'm in between the, that hill and the next one along down by the stream. And I found a nice reasonably sheltered spot. By the time I got here, of course, well, actually by the time I got to the top of the hill, it was pretty dark. And um, yeah. So it was completely dark by the time I got down here. Uh, so I've put the tent up, I've got all my kit out, uh, the bag's lofting up, all that sort of stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sort my tent out, get a brew on, and then um, I'll look up on the map what the name of that hill is, because I've forgotten. Got my gown on, all nice and warm. Set my feet, my feet. They always take forever to, to warm up to my feet. Right, food for tonight. We have tomato soup, cream of tomato soup, which I will, uh, I'll eat a bit later on, I think. Main, main course, uh, Lancashire hot, no, sorry, Lancashire Regiment hot pot from the State Detective. Back on that again. And then cheese and biscuits, which I hadn't brought for a little while, actually. So I fill my pot up with water, drop that in, get that all heated up, uh, probably use the water for the cream and tomato soup, and then I will relax. I've also got a picnic, and for breakfast I have some yogurt, coffee, and a stroop waffle. I just recorded a whole piece to camera with me eating my cheese and biscuits, talking about the meaning of life. But I forgot to switch the mic on. So I finished the cheese. I still got some biscuits left. These are Brevita, I think they're milk and cho chocolate chip. I think it says milk and chocolate chip because there's only like one or two chocolate chips in them. Anyway. Um, main thrust of my argue, my discussion was about answering a question I've been asked as to why I'm not using the Atom Pack lately. And the simple answer is, despite the Atom Pack being a 50 litre pack and the Osprey Exos that I'm using being a 40 litre pack, 48 litre pack, the um, winter kit fits into the Osprey easier than it does into the into the atom and I don't know why but being a lazy swine I take the easy way out as soon as I'm not carrying this huge rab ass 900 bag and all this down stuff the atom will be back out because I I really prefer the way that carries to the way the osprey carries anyway gonna drink my drink get into bed
Oh, I'll see you in the morning. Ooh. Good morning. So I overslept, missed the sunrise, although I wasn't too bothered, to be honest. Wasn't going to be an Andy Beavers on top of hell in Helvellyn type sunrise, was it? Um, so, because I cheated you last night, didn't show you the view from the top of this hill or even prove that I'd been there, I thought this morning, as I'm in no hurry, I would uh, take you up there this morning. So that's the most remote hill in mainland Wales. So I went up there last night, it's far too windy. So in an effort to find somewhere to camp, I came down the ridge, down into that valley, but the, uh, the ground wasn't right. So I carried on and I eventually found a quarry, which is just up there, which I'll show you a bit later on. You can see the spoil heap below it, can't you? Now the shit that I was walking through last night was this stuff. If I just take a bearing through it, you can see it's, this is actually fairly mild compared to what I was walking through yesterday. And honestly trying to do a bearing, complete waste of time because you've got to watch your feet too much and it's just too hard. So I found a track. We'll wander off down this. So hopefully it goes over there and we'll see how we get on. So, <laughs> a wind strong enough to be blowing me over. Thank the Lord I went down. Whoa. Right, I'll show you the view from the most remote hill in mainland Wales. So that's looking safe. It's a bit hazy, I know. Looking west. There's Gara Glass over there. Oh. River. There's Picus D and the Camarthen Van up in the clouds. And this is my way home, which is east. Oh, right, let's get out of here. I think I'm going to go straight down. Because <laughs> anything else is too hard. I'm a bit disturbed that I can't see my tent anymore, but we'll catch it up on the way down, no doubt. It's interesting. See, there's a stream coming down through that valley there. Comes all the way down to this pond and then disappears. I don't think it's going up over this bank, do you? Maybe underneath it. Let's have a look on the other side. They must go down underground altogether. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Here we are back at camp. It's my pitch. Quite pleased with it, although it's not the flattest bit of ground in the world. But uh, she looks good, doesn't she? Bit of flappage because of the grounds sort of hollowed out. And this is this quarry that I've been mentioning. Looking here. Get up there, holding this thing. Is this open? And it's open. I don't know what you can see. Well, that doesn't go very far, does it? Ah. Here's the last couple. Now, this one's gated again. Got a nice lintel on it. I did have a look through here last night. Is this one open as well? It is. So don't go very far in. And it looks like those rocks are holding the roof up. So <laughs> we'll leave that alone, I think. Right, let's get some breakfast. Get a brew on, 
coffee this morning. Nice strong coffee, I think. And a yogurt, and a street waffle. <laughs> and I've got a picnic as well. I might, I might keep that for later on for energy. Two sugars, I think. Oh, there's bits of sunshine coming out. Hmm. Well, there's hope, but it's a very strong wind. So I'm ready to go. Whew. Out into the wind, leaving no trace. There is a little bit of mud where I've been getting in and out of the tent, but other than that, that'll heal. Too sweet. I'm off down that way. I think it's about 10 kilometers I gotta go. Maybe a bit less, but we'll, uh, we'll crack on. I'll see how I feel when we walk past the entrance to the sink gel that I've been talking about. Um, if I feel good, I'll take you down there, but I am pretty knackered, so uh, it may not happen this time, but if I can, I will. Right, let's get on. So, <laughs> I'm almost at the track that goes back to the car now, although it'll be another six, seven kilometers from here. Oh, no, I am knackered. Let me show you what I just had to come across. Here I was on, or underneath, is that one just below the horizon. And I've had to transfer myself across all this mess, following sheep trots and a horse path across this muck down here. I just stopped here because I'm out of the wind. All that I've been walking into 20, 25 mile an hour wind, if not more. It's, uh, it's taxing, <laughs> so I'm knackered. Right, so I've got to get up this hill, tracks it up the top there somewhere, and I've just got to follow it home. Another confession. <laughs> uh, I've decided not to go down to St. Geld. It's about a kilometre from here, it goes down this gully. Quite honestly, having walked all that distance in the wind, into the wind, and with a lot more to go, I just haven't got it in me. So, I'll tell you, I'll explain what it is and show you it on the map. You see this river here, it's quite a big river. This is a ford, believe it or not. <laughs> and it goes on down there, all the way down through that gully, at the end of which it dips, disappears into a hole in the rock. So, I'll bring you out sometime in the summer and show you this. I may be camp out here, who knows. Anyway, I'm going to get back out into the wind and uh, plod my way back. I've still got about five or six k to go. And quite honestly, that's about all I can manage at the moment. So I'll bring you back a bit later on. I find a little bit of respite from the wind here. And it's Oh, this is going to be rock hard, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> I've been wondering, this track goes sort of in and out and up and down. And you can see the sunshine over there. Not over here. I fell off my rock. Get on a wet ass. <laughs> well. It's about the third time I've bit off as much as I can chew, I reckon. I think the last time I was up in the lakes and I was aiming for grey crag and I went up Cordell Moor 
then you've got to go down into is it thrash weight meth and up to salt and weight crag and that that dip and back up killed me I think mainly though because I'd been at Kidsy Pike the day before we should check those out they're quite good videos I think it's called hiding behind a wall because of the wind right I'm going to finish the chocolate get on down right almost back in the valley now at last god that was hard work walking against that wind all those miles started to see people uh, on their way up they're going to struggle when they turn around and come back i tell you let me just show you the view from where i am and i'll say goodbye reckon beacons way goes up over that lot somewhere not sure where <laughs> a nice rocky one over there Apologies for not showing you the top of the hill last night and for not showing you St. Gal today. But uh, I will get out there at some point and I'll show you then. Okay, I just got to get down this bank into the village. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. And I'll hope to see you in the next one. Bye.